Okay, let's first then let's create a heart. So right click here, UI and canvas. So I want to separate the heart and default different canvas. Let's name it heart so we can easily remember this and constant scale screen size math to height and right click here or right click and UI go to the image and in the image you can drag and drop your heart sprite here as soon as you do it's come here just click on the set native size you got to set native size and I think size is too big so let's make it 32 by 32 then uh, just click on this and press alt ELT on the keyboard and just right click here it's automatic drag here and then you need you can adjust the position if you want it to like 0 so I think 30 by 30 so it's not on the margin minus 30 somewhat here then we need I'm going to need, need 5 of this like this so control plus D we are going to 5 image let's rename this 1 this to 2 this to 3 this to 4 and this to 5 and let's position them so we need to add 30 in every one like 30 and 30. let's add 30 here okay we have now 5 of the hearts now go to the player and add a script uh, add a player health script create, you can create your own so I don't I had the wrong one. Player health. Okay. Then open the script. I I already created the health script. So first thing you need to on the top add the in the UI dot UI uh, engine dot UI to access the UI components. Next thing you need to add up a four point health points that is going to be integer and give the default value five. Then we need an array of the hearts because we have already have five hearts, so we need a uh, array. And also we need a uh, sprite of the empty heart, so when the player has lose, they have one health, so it's replaced by the empty one. And next thing we need a rigid body 2D. So I'm going to tell you why we need this. We're going to need this for the knockback. So first let's focus on this three. And um, so let's give drag and drop the all the heart size. Uh, here in the stock this year and drag and drop this heart size to the slots and for the empty one just go to the tiles and and drag and drop your tile slash 46 to the slot after this go down here just create a new function why damage is going to be responsible for the damaging the player so basically here I'm going to decrease the health point by one every time the player gets hit so it's going to decrease the point by one and then we also make sure we need to dis, uh, change the sprite of the health so we're going to hard and we're going to check what the help according to the health point we're going to change the uh, sprite so this is the line so we also need to first check whether the player hit the enemy or not so we're going to use the on collision function for this so we first check check whether it's collide with the enemy or not then we need to go and give the damage we just going to call this function and it's going to work now for the knockback we are going to use the i emulator function because i need some time to have a knockback so first get i emulator knockback and down here just give two parameters load knockback type to how long the knockback will be and the power of the knockback so you can give up some timer here by default is going to be zero and we're going to start the loop here if the knockback time is going to be greater than timer so we need to increase the time so this is going to loop continue till this timer becomes greater than knockback time and in which we also going to give us some force so rb dot add force so i already tell you that we are using a rigid body for the knockback and we are fixing this rigid body in the y start function by getting the component of the people so so we are going to ex take this rb and this rb dot add force so what we are going to do is going to just add the force and we also need to give the interaction the text we need to give um, and multiply by this some magnitude so first we need to give say in the x direction 
and x axis so we're going to multiply by minus 200 minus 200 because we need to give in the negative direction it's opposite back side so it's give uh, minus 200 and we transform dot y and we also need now back the upward side is still depend on you and we're going to add this by I'm going to add this here because I found that adding is much better than the multiplying in. So let's add this by the knockback power that is here, the float. And this is uh, and then we the next line we type ill return null. Now what I'm going to do, I'll just it's going to continue this function till this is wait for next ill return here basically give wait for a second, but it's just a like a wait for a second, but it's going to wait until this function complete. And it is loop going to be complete. So just going to stop this here and just not going to move further. So I would simply yield return null or you can simply give a zero if you want for the shorthand. Anything you want, doesn't matter. And then we also need to call this function because we created it but we didn't call it, so it's not going to work. So we need to give but call if you going to call the i meter, this is small difference that we use start coding for the calling. So start coroutine and just give two brackets and in brackets give this knockback. Now if you give giving knockback, it already have two parameters. So first time, first parameter we need to put time. So having a small type is a great value. It really depend on you need to play around these values. And you give some time of force. So 350f is a uh, float value. So it's basically I uh, found it's good value, but it really depend on you. The more the force, the more than the higher number, the more the force going to be applied. And this is all this, so let's revise what thing. So, firstly, there's three variables and few variables that are going to help point and the array of the image and the empty health and the digital body. We get this digital body from here, and this function is also responsible for the damaging the player. Just simply just subtracting it and hard help point just if the player die, and according to the help point, it's going to change the sprite of the empty hard. And just close in to check whether the player hit the enemy or not. If hit, just give damage and give some knockback. And here, just be controlling and how the long and how the power the power the knockback by using the while function. This is a very simple script. And let's go and play it. So make sure all things are so empty hard hard something look like this. If you look, yeah, I think it play. And if I go near to him, just make sure just let him come back. As if he hit me, I go just. Go backward and look. Our heart sprite also changed by um, also changed by um, empty sprites. And if I do this again, look. The uh, our problem is that we just our index go out of the boundary, so we can we didn't do any ex, uh, extra code how to handle when the all the play all the heart. So after it's all the health gone, what we need? Basically, we do the game over, but I didn't. Yeah, I didn't, we didn't handle that. So simply, what you can do here. Uh, you can go to the create a new function here white update here you can check if help point is uh, less than or equal to zero here simply you need to do here help point zero we simply I think uh, destroy this game object destroy game object basically destroy this or game object or simply uh, okay or simply or just destroy this game object simply as soon as the help point goes zero it's going to destroy this so let's try one more time and look whether it's working or not one two give me more three two one okay now our player has destroyed but okay so our still we don't get any ear down here in console, we don't have any here. We so we play dead. So you can, what you can do? We can play some kind of enemy, some dead, and also see the dead screen. But this thing we're going to look on the further on the video. How can we make a dead screen, game over screens, and with, when we're going to come out with the scene management thing? But from now, we just look in a simple thing. Next thing we need to look on the camera stick is give the very good feeling to the users and also look good. So when the player hit or not. The player hit enemy or kill enemies is give some gets some some sick effects so it look cool. So okay, so first thing just go to the choose your virtual camera, CMV cam one, something like name like this. Don't choose the main camera because just choose, just choose the virtual one that we have. Okay. Then if you scroll down here, they have something called noise. 
So just click on basic multi channel for ending. And here is the giving some kind of warning to choose CD and the warning is gone. Now if I put the flame, I'm going to show some example. Look our camera is shaking right now. If I give the amplitude to stay getting more and more, whereas the amplitude going to less is going to be uh to zero and that's camera still, but if I increase the amplitude, it's going to increase the canvas rate. So what if I we need to just need to control over this value and you can also have a frequency one that going to how frequent is going to happen. So make them to gain by zero by default. So in the play start again does not save in all in this save when the player hit or die anything like something that happens. Then we need to add a component called so add a script that one is responsible for the camera saying so this name a camp sake. I already have one script, so you need to create your own. Okay, let's open up this. Then you open this script. You need to first focus on this line, don't focus on this one, just focus on this one down here. I will tell what is that. So, we need to first refer for our sin machine. So, we make it private sin machine virtual camera. So, and then we also need a how long the stake time will go. So, both the field are private. So it means they are currently null, but the main thing is that this first field is null. So if I play this game without signing, we are here. So we invite update. So we invite start function. We first need to assign this field. So it's pretty easy. Virtual camera is equal to get component equals swing which virtual camera. So make sure that script on the same component in uh, in the same place where the uh, in the same place where the virtual camera was in the same place then we need to go um, also we have a stake time so basically stake time what we going to do stake time go to how long the stake will be so next thing we just go to apply uh, create a new function public voice makes it public so we can access outside the screen from anywhere in the game and so we make sure it's going public and it's function so it's a wide uh, and the stake now this give this take two parameters of int intensity, how the instance will be, the, uh, how powerful, how sake will be, and float timer, how long will it be. So first thing that uh, sin machine is pretty long line. So we so the sin we need to access this curly noise that we have. So in order to control how amplitude of the noise. So first case, sim machine, basic multi channel noise. Uh, this some temporary variable. You can see I give this name a noise, a simple sort name. Okay, then this component was in this time. This is kind of component that is in in the virtual camera. So we need to make sure here that uh, virtual camera dot sim machine component. You need to write sim machine, not a, not get component. You need to write dot get sim machine component, and then you need to find uh, find this. Guy. So then you also sign this. Now from here, this line is going to be easy. You just need to access the noise dot m uh, m dash amplitude gain and just make sure it's going to equal to intensity. And we just make the stake time equal to timer. Now we need part so stake time equal to timer. So let's look how what is this line actually doing. So basically stake time going to make the timer. The time you give how long we will. So it's going to equal to stake time. Then in byte update we need to check that stake time is greater than zero. The stake time greater than zero, we need to subtract by this by time dot delta time. And also we need to give a next state if condition. So if the if the stake time will get less than the zero, we need to stop the our stake. So basically then this line will be the same. We need to first find this and just make them to gain to zero. So basically what we're going to do here, we just first getting a stake that then we need to first we call this function somewhere and this function is going to give some intensity to the amplitude game that makes the camera sick and then in the update we need to count how longer according to timer then we need to subtract it to stake time by the time of delta and as soon as the time goes zero we simply make it zero that makes the stake stop it's pretty easy now the uh, next thing that if we're talking about this line the first line is that public static cam stake instance so basically it's a pretty uh, we just I just starting means it's going to be original. Does not we does not need to create a clone of this instance of this camera six. So publish static camera six and we make this instance if instance 
instance is null so we make this instance equal to this so basically also a field we also need to assign this so this field assigned by this field only so assigning to itself here so next thing to make the stake happen just first go to player health down here let's make camera stake dot instance and sorry dot type stake then here we get some instantiality so zero point giving a bigger value in here and for the short time gives a pretty cool results so for level by 2.2f and also let's add this similar line to the when enemy die so what here and if we are going to play and if i play touch i have touched the player the player touch me is going to give some a stake here so the value going to depend on you look so okay so let's decrease the value by okay let's decrease the time by most give some most sort of time now our camera stake looking pretty cool so that's it for this video and in our next video we are just going to look on the uh, level designing so basically we have a very empty uh, just one ground object and we are going to create a whole level and find out a pretty cool way of how we can create levels easily in unity so thanks for watching we meet in next video so have a nice day